in the midst of a huge transformation where our peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano, she, her, and hers. And I am the Senior Partnerships Manager here at All Voices. Today, I'm super excited to welcome our next guest onto the interview series, Lene Luque. She's the Chief People Officer at Nerd Wallet. Uh, Lene, thank you so much for being here. If you want to share a little bit about yourself for our listeners, including your pronouns, and when you were younger, do you remember how you answered the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? So I'll say my name again, uh, Lene Luque. She, her is the preference. Um, and, you know, just a little bit about myself. I'm I've been in HR for a couple of decades or nearly two decades now. Didn't start my career out here, but I can save that story for a little bit later. When I was younger and people would ask me what I wanted to be, I wanted to be a gymnast, um, cool. very specifically like an Olympic gymnast because the movie Nadia for Nadia Comaneci, um, yeah. Romanian gymnast was very popular when I was a kid. So. Uh, that was my goal. I am not, and I never did that. So much, I'm much too tall, I think, for that career. You fast forward to today. What do you think has really led you to be chief people officer at Nerd Wallet? How has your personal journey really impacted uh, the path? Yes. So I'm the middle child, and I really think that that has um, helped me gravitate towards careers where I'm that bridge the bridge between kind of the younger, the older, or two different viewpoints. And I love that role. I love kind of bringing people together, bringing thoughts together. Now, specifically, I'm also fascinated by what motivates people. So what gets them to do their best work? And I've always been fascinated by that. So that's kind of the, the part in why HR or why I've chosen this career. Now, Nerd Wallet specifically, there is a very personal thing for me there. I grew up in what we call an unbanked household. So this is one of those experiences where my parents went to the check cashing place on Fridays. They didn't go to a bank because that's that's not where um, you know they had money transactions done. And so when I graduated college, I started having money, you know, very good money for my family. It was uh, very apparent that I didn't know anything about money. And I just listened to CDs and PBS specials and articles and books and taught myself. But fast forward to today, knowing that there is so many resources, especially at NerdWallet, very objective resources around personal finance. Like I couldn't be more excited. Um, to be a part of this mission. I love that. I think financial kind of wellness and literacy are, are subjects we should definitely be talking about more, especially earlier on too. And I'm sure that a lot of folks who work at Nerd Wallet as well kind of hold similar values and are really invested in, in the mission of the organization too. How would you say you create kind of these really meaningful moments of connection for new hires at the company? Yeah, so one thing is we're now a remote first culture is what I call it. So pre-pandemic, that was not the case. We are not one of those companies that 100% of people already worked remotely. We had a portion of our organization that did, but now we moved everyone, pretty much almost 100% of people to have the option to work remotely. So reworking our culture is such a big emphasis for us. And what I say is, Let's build for remote first, even if someone comes to the office, because what that does is make sure that we have the habits and the behaviors that include everyone. So whether or not you're on Zoom uh, from an office or whether or not you're on Zoom from your home, you still feel that you're really included. One of the things that we're most proud of and we're keeping as remote first is our onboarding. So instead of bringing everyone to one major office, we're going to keep it remote. And one of the reasons that we wanna do this is we love the kind of programming that we get to put on for this class. And some of it is only available because we are remote friendly. So we still do what we call kind of a nerd wallet you. We have week long activities. You get cover, you cover all of the basics, like here's your paperwork, here's your benefits. But more fun, we take them through this education course at Nerd Wallet. So what do all the departments do? Let's meet the leaders. They have an AMA with the CEO. They have lunches. 
uh, they start really bonding as a new hire class. And as you can imagine, when we were in person, it would be like, oh, well, we can't get you know, the chief marketing officer in to San Francisco this week. So let's not have that segment. So really we're just about, let's try to keep everyone as included as possible. And uh, this remote, you know, first culture has really served us well in that purpose. Yeah, absolutely. There's been a lot of conversations around kind of that sense of belonging, making sure everyone feels included, um, especially in that remote first environment when people might be going to the office when you're on Zoom. Um, and we know that diversity, equity, and inclusion is really important throughout the entire uh, experience of, of the team member working at Nerd Wallet. How are you integrating DEI throughout uh, their time at, at the organization? Yeah, this is super important to me. I feel like one of those people, I've been in the tech space before it was called tech. Uh, so since 2000, <laughs> and I feel like this is just one of those things that we make progress, but we're obviously not done and we likely won't be done in, in my generation. To me, the first thing is um, something that you said earlier is how do we integrate DEI in all we do? So that's step one for me. This is not a separate program. This is just a piece of the employee experience. Let's make sure it's weaved and integrated into the employee experience. So that was number one, right? The second thing is I did an audit from top to bottom of the employee experience. What does it feel like to see NerdWallet on a job board or externally if you're interested in the brand all the way to what does it feel like when you leave NerdWallet? and you're an alumni. And we went in, the team and I, and we started to reimagine and interrupt so many of the processes from top to bottom. One item is we now have partnerships and do active outreach in our recruiting. So kind of from the top of the funnel. Uh, and we actively reach out to people who wouldn't normally apply to a tech job. So as you know, a lot of people are like, I don't have tech experience, therefore I can't apply to tech. And we're like, no, 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 we'll come to you. Right. So we have a two week active reach out where we intentionally go after candidates that normally don't apply. Then we make sure that our interview process is objective, is fair. So we're those recruiters that go to managers and it's like, no, 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 you can't ad hoc this. Like we have an actual process and we wanna make sure that um, for candidate experience sake that we're taking through this same process. So it really starts from the beginning. I think one of the things that I'm most proud of though is many companies have good recruiting they're getting that down. But one item where a lot of companies, unless you're a very large well-resourced company um, doesn't do early on is invest in the development of the people that are here. And so last year we launched a program we're calling CAP. It's a career accelerator program and it's intended to be a high intensity career program for those folks that are in the middle. So they're not yet managers, they're not yet leaders, but we want them to stay and grow and develop into managers and in, into leaders in the organization. And they get a year long coaching, career development, uh, classroom, kind of online classroom experience, as well as mentorship and sponsorship from people inside NerdWallet. So really kind of thinking about like, what are those things that take place today? And what are those things that I'm planning for years out, right? To keep people engaged and committed to here. So uh, something that I'm just very passionate about, hopefully playing a really small part in the change in our industry. Absolutely, that career development is really important as well, that authentic investment of the folks who are there. And also the, the question you mentioned earlier around how are people experiencing NerdWallet in the candidate experience, but also uh, when they are at the, the organization and when they're alumni. And I think one of the things that people really reflect on is what their relationship was to their manager, how were they supported or, or not supported uh, as well. How are you creatively thinking about, you know, intentionally empowering managers, especially new folks who haven't managed a team before? So one thing and, and why I really, you know, uh, had a connection with All Voices a long time ago is I believe getting feedback, real-time feedback is super important. Uh, many people already say this, like that one time a year or two times a year, that's just not enough, right? Especially when you're growing and changing organizations. So we have quite a few touch points 
where managers can directly get feedback. So we do uh, a company-wide survey with 40 plus questions, so very robust, two times a year. And the way the reporting works, managers get access to those reports directly right away. Anonymized, right? Because we want to make sure that people can speak freely in the organization. This is all for constructive purposes. But we also do um, bi-weekly all company meetings. And we have, as part of that, uh, questions and answers so people can ask anything and we will answer it. So that's another kind of ongoing rolling way that people can get feedback. Then of course we do the typical like uh, performance evaluations and as part of that we have upward and peer feedback. So two times a year managers are also receiving direct feedback from their reports as well as their peers that are around them. So maybe people who are experiencing them in a little bit different way. So all that said, you get a ton of feedback over here. Uh, now, what are we doing to help uh, managers make sure that they're their best? We invest, again, in new manager training. We also have managers of managers training, knowing that as you progress in your career, it's going to look a little bit different. Uh, we also have a ton of resources online because of that remote first nature. We wanna make sure that there's enough information for people to self-serve in the moment. So a lot of that information has to do with very specifics of nerd wallet, right? We're going through comp planning. How do you do comp planning? That's kind of self-serve online, uh, as well as you know small workshops that they do. So we're really trying to just pair those two things, feedback and then information so that you can do something with the feedback together to really empower managers. Yeah, those investments are so important and then offering a variety of avenues and opportunities for folks to give that different kinds of feedback as well as you were talking about managing up peer to peer individual to company and individual to manager um, and the different touch points that you have with your with your manager too. Uh, for folks who like to give that kind of one on one feedback, the, the meetings you have with your managers on a weekly or bi weekly basis are so important. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you think about really impactful one-on-ones between managers and team members, if it's, you know, how you conduct your one-on-ones or how you kind of give advice to other managers? Yes. So I'm one of those believers that the one-on-one -on -one really is for the employee, right? So this is their one-on-one. -on -one. I, of course, play a role. I'm here to guide. I'm here to unblock you know, I always say, I want to remove barriers so you can move faster and do your best work. Um, here, we do have a culture of one-on-ones. We encourage them. For the most part, people I hear do them about bi-weekly. It's not necessarily weekly unless there's something that's going on um, that you want that kind of attention to. So we do have some templates and some best practices that are available for managers out there. Personally, I really want those two questions uh, brought to me so that I can help, right? What, you know, what is most important to you? Where do you need help unblocking yourself or making it even better? Um, I really want the employee to kind of walk away feeling that they can do even better work than they were already doing. So for me, it really is like you own the one-on-one -on -one and I own helping empower you to do your best. Absolutely. I think that is also, it's a mutual conversation. It's coming to the table and, and collaborating together too. Um, and I know in terms of remote first, you talked about kind of rethinking, reimagining uh, processes and thinking about the, the company culture too as a dynamic process. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how you've changed your strategy to more asynchronous friendly? If you have any examples for folks who are also going through this change too. Yes, so we did another one of those like top to bottom audits, even for remote, because we knew that we had so many practices that were grounded in the in-person experience. We're not perfect <laughs> by any means, but if there are a couple of things that people can take away, I'm happy to share. So one thing is we do have nerds all over. And we, what we want to do is be respectful of people's time and also just like aware of people's time. You know, people do have lunch at different moments, right? And we don't want to make them not be able to eat, not be able to care for themselves. Their child pickup is 7 a.m. their time, not our time, right? right? So we had one uh, exercise that we did as a company where we asked everyone to go through their calendars and block their time in their local 
uh, time zone. So block off when you have to pick up your kids, block off when you're taking lunch, block off when you have that appointment. The other thing that we did as a company is we said, okay, people have their blocks on their calendars. Now we know we're going to have to have company wide meetings or very large meetings at certain times. So we designated a certain set of hours on, um, in the day and said, those are the ideal times to have really large meetings. Try not to have meetings out, large meetings outside of those times. And the EAs really took it upon themselves to do an audit of the calendars and say, okay, we have to reschedule some stuff, right? So it's in those core working hours. And then the other thing, which I know everyone talks about and we all struggle with is that question of, does this have to be a meeting? Right, so we, so we really try to say you must have an agenda and it's okay if it you know, isn't a meeting. We wanna give permission there. Instead, send an email, tell them that it's an inform. Tell them that it is something that you need a decision on. And if it really has to be a meeting, be prepared so that we can make the best use of time for everyone. So that one is definitely still a work in progress, right? Because I think also, People want a little bit of connection sometimes. We don't talk about that. Like some hate meetings, but some actually like talking through items with folks. Um, so I think that one will be fluid. But those are, you know, three things that we're doing just from a very tactical standpoint, you know, block your time, um, set core hours, and really challenge yourself on whether or not something needs to be a meeting. Yeah, and what kind of meeting is it as well? Is it informational? Is it something yeah. you need to prepare for? Is it collaborative? Um, and time is the most valuable resource, a lot would, would argue too. So I love the idea of just blocking your time in your time zone and having those core hours. Uh, in a remote first environment too, it takes maybe a little bit longer to build that trust. As you said, people want that connection and you're doing it virtually, you're doing it um, asynchronously as well. And I want to ask from your uh, you know, perspective as a leader of the people team, how can organizations really identify um, perhaps some dangers, uh, misaligned values or toxic managers and proactively find them by empowering folks, whether it's day one or, you know, year five to, to really speak up? Yeah, I'm going to come back to this having channels for feedback and continuous real-time feedback, not just holding and waiting one thing we do, I'll go back to it, is that nerd voice. So two times a year, we do a very comprehensive survey and a whole section has manager quality is what I'll call it type questions there. So we will get feedback there. Um, but also if you're brand new, we do check-ins with you. So we have 30, 60, 90 day check-ins and two of those check-ins are formal. So we're surveying you and asking for your feedback on whether or not this job was as advertised, whether or not the manager was as advertised, really trying to get ahead of things. Because if there is a, a misalignment issue that um, can be taken care of, then we want to. But it also helps identify what you say. If there's a misalignment, but you know there's something on our part as an organization or from a manager perspective that we need to jump in on that's the type of data and the feedback that we need in order to kind of get in there and and remedy um, the situation so we do have very formal ways to do that and then we also have a, a very i would say um collaborative and you know folks that love to voice their opinion type culture here at Nerd Bullet, and we have an Ask Me Anything, so an AMA Slack channel that's on there, as well as a manager Slack channel. And there's just so much feedback and so many good questions that come through there. It helps us identify, hmm, are we getting the same question from the same group, right? There might be an issue there. Uh, are we getting managers who are confused or not able to answer employees' questions in this area, all right, that might help us identify where we need to jump in and really partner to make, you know, the manager stronger. So, you know, it's that continuous feedback, just having open lines of communication for folks that I think really makes the difference. Yeah, building that trust, offering the different avenues, really actively listening and taking in that feedback, whether it's formal or informal channels, and then if possible, taking action as well. Can you share an example of how employee feedback, uh, no matter what form it came in, has really inspired a change in 
a policy, a strategy, or initiative uh, at NerdWallet? Yeah, so one of the things, going back to diversity, equity, and inclusion, we just established a very formal plan for DEI in 2021, so kind of mid-2021, about you know, a few months after I was here and I was able to kind of assess the landscape, decide what we needed to do. And one of the things that we wanted to do was educate everyone so that they had the common language around how to speak about DEI, in particular, how to speak about DEI here at NerdWallet. And feedback came in that, well, that's great that you have these opportunities or these education sessions for managers, but what about for individual contributors? And what about for new hires? When we start, do we really have to wait six to nine months to understand this language and understand what NerdWallet expects from us? Sure. And so we decided to make a change. And so now we have an inclusive hiring and an inclusive culture course that is part of our new hire onboarding. So we have a set of curriculum that we want all new hires to participate in. So we do it right from the beginning. Uh, so as soon as you join here, that is part of it. And then, uh, of course, if you're already here, you have access to that. And if you're a manager or leader, you have access and have an expectation around that. So really small thing there, um, but it's just that feedback on like, this is what it felt like to onboard versus this is what it felt like to be an employee. Can you close that gap um, for us? So. Yeah, that accessibility to information and opportunities, and if it's something that folks want to learn kind of earlier on as well, making that pivot and change. Uh, with a lot of changes that are happening, there's bound to be kind of mistakes, and that's okay, especially when we are testing and, and getting that continuous feedback. Uh, from your perspective, are there any common mistakes you see companies making in their people, talent, talent acquisition strategy still? Yeah, this is, this is a tough question because I also feel that your people strategy is so unique to you, right? So it just depends what's going on in your business. You need to figure out what the right, you know, approach is to meet your business needs and your people needs. Um, I think one thing that I feel very strongly about is continuing to offer choice and flexibility to employees. I do not see myself or NerdWallet as coming out very heavy handed and saying, you must come to an office. The only way to succeed as a culture or as a company is if you are physically co-located with groups of people. That to me just doesn't speak to, you know, the needs of people all around the world right now. And I will tell you, employees were exercising this flexibility and freedom before the pandemic, but they were doing it with guilt. Right, like, oh my goodness, I feel guilty for going to a doctor's appointment. I feel guilty for yeah. you know, coaching my kids' soccer mm -hmm. um, game. And yet, as organizations, I'm not sure we felt guilty if we had an emergency call and needed to send them an email or a Slack at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Sure. So really, I'm thinking about this as, how do we show respect both ways and focus on the outcomes? that we want as a business and the results as a business. And as long as those are achieved, then you know I, I don't wanna be the stickler around whether or not you're working from your apartment in Brooklyn <laughs> um, or like me, a garage in Lodi, California. I really just wanna focus on outcomes and outputs. So I, you know, to me that flexibility, if, if you become too rigid, I just don't know if that is gonna meet the needs of the next generation of workers. Uh, I think there's a lot of conversations around that results-oriented environment, really making sure that you have that flexible mindset as well. People are more productive at different times during the day, during the day as well, um, and really making sure you're meeting folks where you are, which I think is a, is a common theme throughout our conversation too. Is there anything that I didn't ask, Lene, that, uh, that you want to share with folks who are listening or underscoring one to two key insights you hope people bring with them, uh, perhaps as practitioners in the space? Yeah, I would just say that this last couple of years has been filled with unknowns <laughs> and uncertainties. And what I would say is, you know, what serves me best is just keeping an open mind and really approaching each problem as unique. We don't have a blueprint. So many times I was 
finding myself telling people, I'm sorry, I've never been, been a leader during a global pandemic. In right. fact, nobody in the world has, that is still working <laughs> and making decisions in the business has been a leader during a global pandemic. So instead, let's approach each problem as the unique problem that it is. And I would also say continue to work together. That was one of the great things about the pandemic is people leaders started coming together and sharing best practices and trying to solve these problems together. I don't want to lose that. I hope that we continue to look at all of these challenges as challenges that we're all dealing with and continue to kind of share and grow and learn from each other. Yeah, we are all in the kind of similar boat in navigating these problems uh, and looking for solutions and architecting them uh, at the same time in real time. So really making sure we're brainstorming, collaborating, um, and really asking for, for help when we need it and taking care of each other and ourselves. And I thank you so much for being on Reimagining Company Culture this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, and of course, and as a reminder for folks who are listening and all voices, we really believe in uh, making sure your employees feel heard, seen, and understood. Um, I think it's critical to the business. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone.